I am in Florence, the capital of Tuscany, or as they call it, Firenze. It's a city museum under the open sky on the River Arno, the birthplace of Italian Renaissance, Michelangelo Buonarroti, Sandro Botticelli, Donatello, and of course, Leonardo da Vinci all lived and created here. When French writer Stendhal visited the city for the first time in the 19th century, he experienced heart palpitations and almost fainted. Since then, they call it Stendhal syndrome, when you encounter something so beautiful that you feel dizzy. And I would too, but I was here this summer. It was scorching hot, but now September, the weather is beautiful. It's in the 20th centigrade or 70th Fahrenheit. It's probably the best time to explore the city. But I'm here mainly to attend the Biennial Antique Fair. It started in 1959, so it's older than Tifaf Maastricht, which I covered a few months ago. The link is below. It's a small affair dedicated to Italian art up to 1989. And the organizers announced that for the first time, they're venturing into the metaverse. Right the second, they have a press conference in Italian, which I don't speak, but let's go and take a peek. I'm not going to pretend that I understand anything, except that it sounds beautiful. No wonder that the Florentine dialect became the official Italian language. The speakers are various city dignitaries, like Mayor Dario Nardella, Chairman of Bia Fabrizio Moretti, Italians like to speak with their hands. And I was told prominent art critic Vittorio Sgarbi. After the conference, I wait in a long line of Italian journalists to speak with the Secretary General of the Fair. Uh, Mr. Moretti, congratulations on successful launch of the uh, biennial. Uh, please tell me a few words about the uh, fair. So the Minal is the, one of the most important art fairs in the world, actually the most infor, important art fair in the world Italian. dedicated to True Italian that. art. <laughs> Made in Italy is the best. We are in this amazing palace, Palace Corsini, and we have the best art dealers in the world coming here with their objects. It's, uh, it's challenging for us after the pandemic, but we made it. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. While Signor Moretti says that everything is great and the best, and it's hard to argue with that, the Italian art market has one important issue, draconian art export laws. Up until recently, it was almost impossible to take an artwork of any considerable value out of the country. Now, the cultural heritage law allows to export an artwork of up to 13,500 euro price tag. But even then, the amount is meager. For reference, in France, you can export art valued at 300,000 euros. Now about the venue. Uh, the fair is held in historic Palazzo Corsini, which is normally closed to the public. Uh, the family originated in the 12th century and the descendants still own the palazzo. Isn't it amazing? The Baroque-style palazzo overlooking the Arno was bought by the Corsinis in the 17th century. The family has a long history of involvement with art and culture. Lorenzo Corsini, who became Pope Clement XII, commissioned the Trevi Fountain in Rome. The late Princess Georgiana Corsini was an important figure in the Florence art scene. She provided the palace as a permanent home for the Biennale, which has been hosted since 1997. Duccio Corsini is the present head of the family, is a wine and olive oil merchant. I was here the night before, while the preparations were on the way, and even took a sneak peek inside. It's past midnight. Venetian decorator Matteo Corvino is in charge of getting the place ready for the fair. It's a perfect setting for the antique fair. After a three-year break due to the pandemic, 
the 32nd BF edition welcomes back about 80 galleries, which are displaying museum-quality artworks in the grand rooms of the Palazzo on two floors. Let's go and meet some. Giacometti Old Master Paintings, Naples. I'm Tiziano. Tiziano? It's yeah, like, like the Okay. <laughs> I love it. Tiziano name. Casola. I work for Giacometti Old Master Paintings. The okay. So can you please tell me a little bit about the gallery, when it was established, by whom? Yeah. Giacometti Old Master Paintings is a gallery established in 2014 in Naples and in Rome. Uh, we sell essentially 17th and 19th century Neapolitan painters and sculptures. Mm -hmm. the, the owner is Umberto Giacometti and uh, I work uh, with Umberto in, in different occasions since 2016. In, in our stand we carried a lot of works, mm -hmm. about uh, 45 works of art. We brought a very few of sculptures, but very important. For example, we have a bust of Giuseppe Verdi by Vincenzo Gemito. Another highlight is the Antonio Mancini's self-portrait. Uh -huh. Today is just a preview, uh -huh. but it's going very well. All right, thank you very much. Berardi Galleria de Arte. Very <laughs> uh, my name is Gianluca Berardi, uh, I'm um, of the gallery, uh, Berardi Galleria d'Arte that was founded in Rome ah. in 2000. It's a relatively uh, young gallery, but uh, uh, the work is focused on 19th and 20th century art, paintings and sculpture. Mm -hmm. It's a high uh, vertical specialization mm -hmm. on uh, uh, this field. Mm -hmm. And uh, we work on this kind of uh, artist and uh, often we did uh, exhibition, catalog, and uh, um, history, research of history of art, also in the, in the fairs. We try to, mm -hmm. to bring uh, the history of art. This is uh, our characteristic. Uh, for example, in, uh, in Florence, mm -hmm. uh, we are here with, with four focus, one on self-portraits, one on uh, realism magico, this is a uh, um, uh, hyper-realist current in Italy, one on uh, post-impressionism, mm -hmm. and uh, one uh, focus is about the art and exploration in 19th century. This is... Uh, our uh, exhibition here. So what I saw outside is also yours, right? Yeah. There is yeah. a self self portrait, like Se almost like selfie, right? <laughs> right. In fact, uh, we we um, choose the name uh, um, selfie of artist uh -huh. to try to give some contemporary appeal right. to this exhibition. Is not. Right. Uh, Correct, uh, like concept, because selfie is something that you do very hairy, and mm -hmm. instead of the mm -hmm. self-portrait is a mm -hmm. very different thing. But uh, mm -hmm. I think it works. What brought you into art? Are you art historian? What's your background? Um, I was a professor at the university. Uh, I teach, In Rome. Uh, yeah, I teach uh, 19th century art. And uh, yes, I, I love that uh, work, but uh, this is more uh, interesting because you are uh, ever uh, in contact with the, with the art, with the painting, with the sculpture. Mm -hmm. It's more adventure. Tornaboni Arte, Florence. The gallery opened in 1981 in Via Tornaboni, so the name comes from, from that. And then we moved to Lugano Cellini, where we had the gallery moment and Mr. Casamonte, that is the owner of the gallery, um, we start with uh, different artists from the Chirico with modern and with contemporary art. So we start with the Chirico, with the pieces and, uh, and uh, the international artists like Picasso or Miro, Kandinsky and all the others. And then he focused on the contemporary art in Fontana in the 60s in the Italian 60s, so Fontana, Burri, Boetti, and all the other uh, important artists that we have, <laughs> we had in Italy in that period. So, for example, we have also Manzoni, a focus on, on uh, Piero Manzoni. Mm -hmm. And then here you can see other international artists like Cristo, and then you have two Fontanas with two slashes and three slashes, one white and one red. 
And you have um, Piero Dorazio, that is another Italian important artist for us. And uh, a little Murri, a work by Alberto Murri, where you can see all is uh, kind of the way of work. So you have uh, the gold, you have the stuff that is burlap, and then you have the sand, so it's, it's complete. It's a very complete work. So this is the book. And as I mentioned earlier, BF is entering the metaverse. By scanning a QR code on your phone, anyone can have an immersive experience of viewing a gallery of previous prize-winning artworks in augmented reality. This collaborative project with Ernst & Young Italy is intended to bring art to Gen Z and Millennials. But that's not all. In conjunction with BF, the city is celebrating art by holding the Florence Art Week with a series of collateral events. One of them is Oliver Eliasson's exhibition Nel tuo tempo, In Your Time, at the 15th century Palazzo Strozzi. The Danish Icelandic artist prepared a new installation called Under the Weather for the courtyard of the Palazzo. A giant moiré ellipse suspended at a three-story height offers us an interactive experience by moving under and around it for a different perception of the space around us. Another event is Tony Craig's exhibition Transfer at the Museo Novicente. The British artist is known for his circular sculptures wrought from bronze, stone, wood, and other materials. The first time I was introduced to his art was at the Bookman Gallery stand during the Art Basel. So it's nice to see his exhibition here in Florence. And one of the rooms recreates Craig's studio to show his process. And the cherry on top. I had the pleasure of meeting the owner of the oldest goldsmith atelier and shop on the oldest bridge in town. Fratelli Piccini Jewelers on Ponte Vecchio. I will post a separate video about it. My name is um, Elisa Tozzi Piccini and um, I am the fourth generation of a family business who started uh, on uh, this location in 1903. And since I was a child, actually, I was meant to come here because uh, in Italy and uh, in certain areas of the world, when you have a family business, you have like no chance. You, you don't think about anything else. And that's where you kind of just pop in. But it's very amazing. I'm very proud and I love to carry on the tradition of my family because uh, that's part of my DNA. So you grew up in it and you have no other chance. You don't know what else to do and you do it with passion. It's just part of your life. So it's very easy. The day is not done without the fireworks over the Arnold night. It looks perfect tonight. Ciao. From Florence, I'm Jane Greaves.